there are a couple of important vocabulary words I think that you probably need to be familiar with. And the first one here is allele. The, uh, this uh, word allele are the various molecular forms of a gene for the same trait. Now, when you see the word allele, you need to think letters. Now, some of you may have had genetics in high school, and you've seen things like capital T, lowercase t, or capital T, capital T. That's what we're talking about here. Um, these letters are alleles. This is an allele, and that is an allele. If something is said to be homozygous, then both alleles are the same. So you're talking about same capitals, capital T, capital T, or capital T, lowercase t, lowercase t. That would be homozygous. The word heterozygous is when one allele is dominant, which is capital, and the other is recessive, which is lowercase. Hopefully you've gone through most of the lesson already and you understand some of these concepts. I'm just kind of review it here. So, once again, homozygous dominant is capital A, capital A. Homozygous recessive is lowercase a, lowercase a. And heterozygous is capital A, lowercase a one dominant and one recessive. In order to work plenty of square problems, you're going to need to know the word genotype and the word phenotype. Genotype is the genes or the letters. The phenotype is usually expressed in word form. It's a description, and it's how the genes are expressed. So let's translate all these vocabulary words into something that we can use. Um, here's a typical problem that you'd come across when you're doing genetics. It says, in some species of plants, tall plants are dominant to short plants. This first sentence kind of sets up the problem for us. It tells us what's dominant, what's recessive. You need to pay attention to that. The problem actually starts here. Predict the outcome between a homozygous dominant plant and a short plant. Homozygous, remember, means same. Dominant means capital letter. So we've got one plant that looks like this. and a short plant. Now, what's the only way to get a short plant? That's going to be lowercase, lowercase. If it had a capital T, it would be a tall plant. So the only way to get a short plant is to be lowercase, lowercase. All right, so we're going to draw our Punnett square box. And you're going to put one letter over each box. My lowercase t is on this side. It doesn't matter who goes on top, who goes on the side. Then you're going to fill in your box by bringing this capital T down, this lowercase t across, capital T down, lowercase t across, capital T down, lowercase t across, capital T down, lowercase t across. That fills in our box, but that's only part of the problem. We now have to come over to the side, and we need to do the genotype, and we also need to do the phenotype. To do the genotype, we need to look at all four boxes. And we want to ask ourselves, how many of the boxes are the same? And in this case, 100% of our boxes are going to be capital T, lowercase t. Because all four of your boxes, four out of four, are capital T, lowercase t. Now, to do the phenotype, phenotype is words. In this case, we're dealing with tall and short. Is this one tall or short? It's tall. Tall, tall tall because they all have a capital T, and T covers up the lowercase. So in this problem, 100% of your offspring are going to be tall. Okay? Let's move on to the next problem. In bears, brown fur is dominant, uh, excuse me, black fur is dominant to brown fur. Predict the outcome between a homozygous, there's our key word, homozygous dominant black bear, and one that is heterozygous. All right, homozygous means same, dominant means capital, so in this case we're going to have, um, I'm going to use B's this time, capital B, capital B, homozygous dominant. And one that's heterozygous. Our heterozygous one is going to be different, hetero means different, so we're going to have capital B, lowercase b. All right. So I'm going to make my point in square box. I'll put a letter on each side.
And to fill in the box, I'm just going to bring this big B down, this B across. Big B down, big B across. This big B is going to come down, this little B is going to come across. Big B, little B. All right, I'm going to come out beside there, and I'm also going to do the same thing, do genotype. And I'm going to do phenotype. Genotype is referring to the letter, so I'm going to look and see how many boxes are the same. Now these two boxes are the same. Two out of four. Well, when you convert that, you can either say one half, or you can say 50% is going to be capital B, capital B. And the other 50% are going to be capital B, lowercase b. For phenotype, this one's going to be tall. I mean, excuse me, it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> Got confused. This is going to be uh, black because black is our dominant color. Black, black, black. So all four boxes, four out of four, a hundred percent of them are going to be black. In that case, and this is our completed answer: Punnett square, genotype, and phenotype. All right. In some jellyfish, branch tentacles are dominant to unbranched tentacles. Predict the outcome between a, a heterozygous jellyfish and one that has unbranched tentacles. All right, our first one is going to be a heterozygous jellyfish. Um, let's use, we can use B again. This would be our heterozygous jellyfish, and then one that's unbranched. The only way to get unbranched, because branched is dominant, the only way to get unbranched is to be lowercase, lowercase. So I'm going to draw my Punnett square box. I'm going to put my letters, one letter over each box and fill in the Punnett square. I'm going to come out to the side and do genotype and I'm going to do phenotype. Alright, I'm going to look at my four boxes. I've got two boxes that look like that, two out of four, which is 50% capital B, lowercase b, and then 50% of them are going to be lowercase b, lowercase b. Now I'm going to do phenotype. So I'm going to look at which ones are branched and which ones are unbranched. I've got this one got a capital B, so that one is branched. This one's got a capital B, that one is branched. But these two down here don't have capital Bs. So they have to be unbranched. So I've got 50% branched and 50% unbranched. Now, does that mean that they're going to have four babies and two of them are going to be branched and two of them are going to be unbranched? No. It just means no matter how many babies they have, there's a 50-50 chance of having a, either a branched or a 50% chance of having an unbranched baby. It doesn't mean they're going to have four babies and two of them are going to be branched and two of them are going to be unbranched. Okay? Let's work one more problem like this. In some plants, red berries are dominant to white berries. Predict the outcome between two heterozygous plants. That means both mama and daddy plant are heterozygous. All right, so we're going to do our Punnett square. And you're going to fill it in just like you always have done with Punnett squares. All right, and you're also going to do genotype and you're going to do phenotype again. All right, so under genotype, I've got one box that looks like this. Now that would be one out of four. One box out of four, one-fourth. One-fourth is 25%. So 25% of them look like this. One of them looks like this. Two of them look like that. So 50% would be capital R, lowercase r. All right, let's go down to phenotype now. Remember, if it has a capital R anywhere in it, no matter if it's one capital R or two capital R's, it's going to be red. This one has a capital R. This one has a capital R. This one has a capital R. So three of those four, three-fourths, are going to be red. That's 75% red. This last one down here without a capital R, is going to be white.